This video is about logarithmic differentiation, and we're just going to dive in with some examples. We've already discussed differentiation, we've already discussed the chain rule, all kinds of derivative rules that we're just going to combine here with our understanding of logarithms from good old algebra. So our first example is where we want to differentiate the function y equals, and then we have sine of x in parentheses with an exponent that is the natural log of x. So this is sine of x to the natural log of x. Now, if you think back in the context of the kinds of differentiation we've been doing, you'll recall this is actually explicit form, which means it'd be ideal if we could produce an explicit derivative where y is on one, or dy dx is on one side, and then all the x's are on the other. Now, let's also though recognize that this does not quite fit any of the derivative rules we have. It's not a power rule because a power function has a power that's a numerical value. This is a natural log exponent. So you can't multiply by natural log in front and then decrease it by one. It does not fit the power function rule. So what we're going to use is what's called logarithmic differentiation, where we simply take our function, I'm going to rewrite it as y equals, and then it was sine of x to the natural log of x power, but we're going to take the natural log of both sides of this function. The reason we want to do this is because as soon as you introduce natural logs, you can use all the log properties or rules, which would allow us to take this exponent of natural log of x and throw it down in front, which if I rewrite it would give us the natural log of y on the left side equals the natural log of x times the natural log of the sine of x. So again, that's just using a log rule there, no derivatives yet. But remember, the point is to find the derivative, and now it's written in implicit form. Thankfully, we know how to handle that. If I take the implicit differentiation, of both sides, on the left side, the derivative of the natural log of y would be 1 over y times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. Okay, so there's some chain rule happening there with the implicit differentiation. And then on the right side, we'd have to see this as a product. It's natural log of x is the first factor, and then natural log of sine of x as the second. So here goes product rule. We'll say first, natural log of x, times the derivative of the second, well, the second is just a composite function where the outer function is the natural log, inner function is sine x. So that would be 1 over sine of x, that's like 1 over u, if you're using the log rule for derivatives there, times the derivative of the sine of x, the inner part, the u part, or u prime, you could say. The derivative of sine is cosine, so there's 1 over u, u prime, for the second, there's first, d second plus second, which is the natural log of the sine of x, times the derivative of the first, which is just 1 over x. Thankfully, that's a little simpler there. Now, the whole point is to get dy dx, and I could write that out now, where dy dx is on the left side. If I multiplied, actually, let me just leave the 1 over y in front of it for a second. If we simplify the right side a little bit more, I'll have the natural log of x, times cosine of x over sine of x, which is also known as cotangent, you could write it that way, plus the natural log of sine of x times 1 over x. Now recall that we're trying to get an explicit derivative here, and we're actually almost there. I see the dy dx, there's only one of them, so we could get that alone pretty easily. And when we do, though, we could multiply by y on both sides to get rid of this 1 over y. And then you may say, ah, well, that's going to ruin our explicit derivative, which only has x's on the right side. Well, not so. If I have dy over dx, and then I multiply by y on both sides, I'd have a y in front of what I have on the right side, which is this natural log of x times cosine over sine, I'm just going to write that as cotangent of x, plus, and then it's natural log of sine of x all over x, you could say, write it that way. But then we know what y is, 
if you go back to the original problem, y is just sine of x to the natural log of x power. So I'm going to rewrite it or replace it with that. Sine of x to the natural log of x, and that's replacing dy. And now what we see here in summary is an explicit form of our derivative. Let's try a second example. This time the function reads y equals, and then in parentheses we have the square root of x, and that's all raised to the x power. So again, this is not a power function because the power you see is not a number, it's another function, dx. So we're going to try to use logarithmic differentiation on this. But before we do, let's actually do one other little algebraic trick to help us out. I'm going to rewrite this as y equals, and then the square root of x is really x to the one half. So really our function is x to the one half all to the x power, which means this is really x to the one half x power. You could say it that way. So if I take um, the natural log of both sides now, I'll have the natural log of y on the left, and on the right, I'll have the natural log of x to the one-half times x on the right. Then I can do a couple things. I can take this one-half down in front along with the x. So this will become natural, natural log of y on the left side equals, then really I have x over 2 times the natural log of x on the right side because the one half times the x all came down in front just using a log rule there, no derivatives. But now I want to apply the derivatives in the implicit form. On the left side I would have 1 over y dy dx. On the right side I would have this product rule where I have first, which is x over 2, times the derivative of the second, which is 1 over x, that's the natural log of x derivative there, so there's first d second plus second, that's natural log of x, d first would just be one half. If we simplify and solve for dy dx, we would have uh, dy, well, let's write it as one over y dy dx on the left side. On the right side, the x's in the first term would cancel, giving us just one half plus the natural log of x over two as that second term. And then I could solve for dy dx by multiplying by y on both sides, which would tell me then dy dx equals y times, now remember, y is going to get replaced, so hold on one second with that, but it's y times one half plus natural log of x over two, but instead of y, we can replace it with the original function, so that's square root of x to the x times 1 over 2 plus natural log of x over 2. This could be our final form of our derivative. This is only possible through logarithmic differentiation, which you're now seeing in a couple examples. Really, it's nothing brand new. It's using implicit differentiation, all the other rules we know, as well now with the older logarithm rules.